What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Crisis Core Reunion. And this is going to be one that you do not want to miss, okay? Do not even blink because I am going to be showing you how to get so ridiculously overpowered early that you can easily crush Minerva. And these tricks start from as early as chapter 2. Okay, now to show off just how early I am, look at the bottom left. I have 27 hours on the clock. And if we just check my load screen, as you can see right now, I am only on chapter 4 with this save. Okay, this save is only on chapter 4. And look at my time. Now, let's take a look at my equipment, shall we? I have max stats. I have the Divine Slayer from beating Minerva, the game's optional super boss. And again, all by chapter 4 in under 27 hours. So, how exactly did I do this? Well, first of all, let's actually just jump to chapter 2, shall we? So I'm going to very quickly load a save right now. One of my earlier chapter saves, and I'm going to show you guys this as well, because I don't have saves from individual points in the chapter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this one right now where chapter 2 clears. So this is going to put us instantly at the very start of chapter 3. Nothing has been done in chapter 3 on this save. So we're just going to skip the cutscene so we can actually get to the menu. Okay, now looking at my uh, my stats, my level, obviously nothing too impressive. But if we look at my equipment, I have Status Ward, Hal Blizzard, Status Strike, and Trifundiga. Some incredibly, incredibly potent magic and very, very helpful. So, how exactly do we get all of this stuff? Because this is incredibly, incredibly broken for chapter two and is gonna let you get through so many of the early missions, okay? Not only early missions, but also the later missions, which are, you know, somewhat, somewhat high stars. Obviously, that's only four stars there. We have um, <clears throat> some more higher stars coming, like six stars, all done, no problem. So, in order to get some of this material, the first and foremost thing we are going to need to do is, you guessed it, go through missions, okay? We are going to have to do missions, unfortunately. Now, you can do the missions realistically in any way that you want. However, one of the things that I would honestly just, just strongly, strongly recommend you do, okay, is go for Magic Pot first. The only difference is this can't be done the same way as the PSP version of the game, okay? On the PSP version for UK and Europe, you could unlock items in a mission and then you could quit out of the mission, still keeping your items. You cannot do that in uh, the Reunion because Reunion is based on the Japanese version of the game, okay? So... What you want to do first and foremost when you get to chapter 2, when you start unlocking your missions, you first want to go through the 8-2 missions. So all of these ones, you want to go through all of these. Once you've done these, go to the, uh, the Materia Room in Shinra HQ. So on the Soldier Floor, just go to the Materia Room, which is located right here. Speak to the researcher in there. Obviously, I've already done that. I don't have a save far enough back to show you guys that. I apologize, but speak to the researcher in there and you'll get a bunch of materia. Once you have done that, you are then going to move on to mission 6-1. And you're going to do all of these as well. The only thing is, in mission 6-1-5, okay, there is a tonberry in this mission. You need to kill that tonberry in order to unlock mission 10-2-1. Once you've got mission 10-2-1 unlocked... Again, go through that, get to mission 1023. Now you see here that I have this complete, okay? That is because I couldn't get Magic Pot without completing the stage. However, after I did this, I did figure out one little thing we could do. When you unlock Magic Pot in this stage, what you need to do is you need to fight random encounters, okay? Just fight random encounters until you come up against Magic Pot. When you come across Magic Pot, you need to use uh, a couple of attacks. It's really simple. Jump, Gravity, Fire, 
an assault twister. Now, gravity you will get from the Materia Researcher from completing the previous missions. Fire, you should have a few of them by now. Assault twister you get from earlier on in the game from completing Wutai. And jump also comes from a previous mission, so you will have all the Materia needed. Just use them in the order that uh, Ma Magic Pot asks for. And upon doing that, you will actually get Magic Pot's DMW, okay? Now, what Magic Pot does is it basically gives you a random item. And some of these items can be incredibly, incredibly good. For example, you can get Shinra Beta Plus, an accessory which gives you 80 extra vitality. And that is going to be mega important for later missions. Other than that, you can get a ribbon if you want to from a level 5 uh, magic pot. Or, ideally, you can get gold rolling pins. One, three, or five of them. Each gold rolling pin sells for 50,000 gil. You can also get a bunch of elixirs and phoenix downs as well. Now, once you get the magic pot DMW, stay in that mission, okay? Do not kill the, uh, the master tomberry at the very end. But just go into a normal fight with some normal tomberries. Kill all the tomberries except for one. Okay, and then just stay in that fight. Make sure you have a bunch of potions and a bunch of ethers and stuff like that. Just stay in that fight because this way Magic Pot will be the only summon that you can get on the DMW. And if you do this in Chapter 2, you'll be getting Magic Pot incredibly, incredibly frequently. But if you do complete 10 2 3, unfortunately, it lowers the effectiveness of Magic Pot farming by 75% percent because it will also then add chocobo mode to the dmw and that just completely kills your chances of actually landing magic pot so again unlock magic pot do your magic pot in this stage before completing the stage and then complete the stage to unlock tom berry so make sure that you have a good a good few hours to actually dedicate to this because the more gold rolling pins you can get the better Okay, now once that is done, we can do a couple of things. Firstly, you can either farm materia, like you can farm materia levels. I don't suggest doing that just yet though, but that is entirely up to you. Now we want to complete a bunch of missions and I'll also throw these on screen as well. Do them in the order that they are listed. Start at the top left, move all the way down to the bottom left, then start in the middle, move all the way down to the bottom middle and so on and so forth. Do all of these in order. Once you complete mission 4 to 6, you unlock the secret Wutai shop. Now this shop is good for a number of reasons, okay? Firstly, it sells the HAL Materia. Now, the HAL Materia is really good for the simple fact that it has status effects. Poison, Silence, Stop, and Death, okay? This is really good for two reasons. Firstly, you can combine it with Status Strike. What this means is whenever you attack a mob, you have a chance to poison them, silence them, stop them, or instantly inflict death. This is going to make a whole bunch of the upcoming missions ridiculously, ridiculously easy. More importantly though, you want to get Status Ward, because when Status Ward is maxed out, it completely makes you immune to all of these effects as well, and you are going to need Death Resistance for later missions, because there are quite a lot of monsters that will actually inflict instant death. Now, once you've done Mission 443, you've got these materials, and yes, I know they're expensive. This is why you need to get some gold rolling pins from Magic Pot, as I mentioned earlier. But once you've got uh, once you've got these materia, one of the other things we need to do is we need to get Sector 7 shop. And in order to do that, we need to complete Mission 443. So go back to missions, go through 441, 442, and then 443. This will give you the Sector 7 shop. And there's a few things we want to buy here as well. Mog's Amulet is absolutely amazing. Items dropped or stolen will always be rare. This is going to be like... This is going to be needy. This is going to be required unless you want to literally spend hundreds of hours doing what you could do in 10. Okay? Get this. This is vi this is vital. Brigand's Gloves you can ignore until the next chapter. You are going to buy this, but you can leave it till chapter 3. That is perfectly fine. 
Also, I do strongly recommend buying a wizard bracelet. It makes you immune to all elements and it also increases your MP, vitality and spirit, which is going to come in absolutely tremendously, tremendously helpful. Now, once you've done all of this, chances are you're probably going to be around the 10 hour mark. Don't worry though, we only have a few more missions to go right now. And the first one is going to be getting some levels. So at this point, once you've just bought all of your stuff, load up 111 and literally just stay in there for about an hour. You can go AFK if you want to. You know, just stay in there for an hour, let your DMW roll until you stop getting level ups. You should have got quite a bunch of EXP from the missions you've just done. So now it's time to actually get your level ups from the DMW. Ideally, you want to try and aim for around 30 or higher. Once you've done that, it's time to do the hardest missions at this point. And that is mission 4 5 1 to 4 5 6. Obviously, I've not done them just yet. That is simply due to the fact I wanted to wait, which you can wait as well. Because here in chapter 3 at the very start, you have to speak to the director and you will then be promoted to soldier first class. Obviously right now I can only equip for materia. At the very start of chapter 3, this gets upgraded and you can equip up to 6 materia. Extraordinarily important. So what I'm going to do now real quick is I'm going to load another save and this time... We are going to advance to sort of the uh, the end of chapter 3, okay? We're not going to go to the start of chapter 4 just yet. We're just going to go to chapter 3 so I can show you the difference from my current stats to the next set of stats. Also, look at the time. 9 hours on the save that I am on currently. 17 hours at the end of chapter 3, okay? So let's load that one real quick and we'll show the actual difference off. So right here... I have 100 plus in stats, like 150 plus in stats. I have max HP without the MP, uh, the HP break limit. But look at my equipment. I've got Zadrik. I've got Genji Gloves. I've got Electrocute, Costly Punch, Dual Cast. Uh, I've got a high HP Darkness. I've got SP Master. Like there are so, there is so much stuff we can do in Chapter 3. It is unreal. Okay, now as for how to get some of this materia, I'm going to talk about that right now, okay? And then I'll talk about some of the chapter 3 exclusive stuff like equipment. Now, when it comes to actually unlocking the materia, like this can, this can also be done during chapter 2, do not worry, okay? All the materia I am about to list can be gotten in chapter 2 if you really, really want to. Also, as you can see, 17 hours, I have Minerva unlocked. That's how easy this is. So in mission 443, okay, this is going to be one of the first materia you actually get. 443, it is a seven star mission. However, you do need that to unlock the sector seven shop. In this mission, you can get a tri fundiger materia. That is going to be the strongest materia you get for a good while. But before that, just use gravity, okay? Gravity materia, basically everything is able to be used with gravity in this game. Like, everything is basically weak to it. And it deals so, so much damage. You always want gravity equipped, okay? It's going to speed everything up. And also, throw poison on as well. Poison and gravity is the most ridiculous overpowered combo early on, right? You're going to be using that until you basically get material like i'm showing off here gravity and poison is the best early combo to go through the missions now once you've got tri from chest 443 uh, sorry stage 443 we're going to start working on materia fusion okay now firstly we want to get graviger magic now graviger can be obtained by fusing a dash materia so the the purple dash materia with a normal gravity materia Okay, they don't they don't have to be mastered or anything like that. Or what you could also do is you can use a mastered gravity with a Libra materia. Now again, all these combinations will be on screen. After that, you want to get Blast Wave. Blast Wave is going to be one of the best farming materias in the game. 
okay it is just absolutely amazing an amazing 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 material in order to get blast wave you need to fuse a mastered graviger material with a non-mastered jump or a salt twister you get a salt twister from the end of wutai there's also an early mission which you can also get one from fighting ifrit now blast wave is going to be your main killer for pretty much all future missions, okay? In fact, you would probably be using it for, you know, some of the missions I've already mentioned as well. It is incredibly, incredibly good. After Blast Wave, you want to get Electrocute. Now, Electrocute, the easiest way of getting that is by using Fusion with a Mastered Trifundiga and a Mastered Libra, okay? Just combine those two and you will get Electrocute. Then we'll start getting wall. And the easiest way to get wall material is either from a previous mission or you can simply buy quake from the shop, the Wutai secret shop. You can buy a quake material and you can fuse that with a HP up as well. And last but not least is costly punch. I'm sure anyone who played the original knows just how broken Costly Punch is, and that comes from Materia Fusion. The easiest way is using Hammer Punch, which is Mastered, fused with a Mastered Libra, okay? Now, that is how to get some of the best Materia early on. Once you've got this material, you'll pretty much fly through all of the missions and get a massive completion rate going, sort of like I have right here. It will also allow you to get all the way through to Minerva, pretty much no problem. So, once you've got those materials, let's move on to some other accessories, shall we? Now, what I'm going to talk about right now is specifically Chapter 3 stuff. Everything I just mentioned can be done in Chapter 2. What I'm about to mention is Chapter 3 onwards only. When you do get to chapter 3 though, advance through the game, uh, advance through the chapter until you get to Mocha Reactor 5. The reason is, once you get to Mocha Reactor 5, you will get a mail which gives you some extra missions, which you essentially need to advance on to Minerva. Once you get those missions, we want to start really maxing stuff out. Also, you can buy a Libra Materia from Research Department's QMC store, which is obtained after beating the G Eraser in the story in this chapter. You can also uh, steal Hammer Punch Materias from the boss in stage 446. Highly, highly recommend doing that. Now... We've talked about materia. Let's talk about the really good accessories like the Zadrik, which gives an extra 100 in stats and halves all elemental damage. Genji Glove, which breaks the damage cap and creeps critical status. Uh, Brutal breaks the damage cap. Adamant Bangle breaks the HP cap and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not going to talk about all of the items that you can get here, okay? I'm not going to talk about them all at all. What I am going to talk about is the most important ones, okay? So, let's start with the Zadrik, shall we? And the Zadrik is actually quite a simple one because it's obtained from just a treasure chest. The problem with that, unfortunately, is the mission is 956. So it is quite a high-end mission. It is a little bit difficult, and it will take you a little bit of time to get there. However, it is one of the best accessories in the game, and since you can get it from as early as Chapter 3, makes it highly, highly recommended. So I do suggest picking that up. Again, treasure chest, stage 956 for the Zadrik. Now, what about the others? So there's the Genji Glove. Now, the Genji Glove, again, is unfortunately a late stage treasure chest. This one comes from 964. So very, very close to the end of the hardest missions. But it's incredibly, incredibly good. It breaks the damage cap and gives you guaranteed critical hits. But there are easier ways to break the damage cap, such as the Brutal. So the Brutal, there are two ways that you can get this. If you want to get this as early as possible, then the only way to really do it is Mission 951. It is a reward for completing this mission and comes it becomes extraordinarily helpful pretty much as soon as you get it. Other than that, if you want to wait a little bit, you can get it from Mission 746 in Chapter 4 or Chapter 5. 
It's chapter four or chapter five. I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact chapter that that mission becomes available, but it is one of the two. Other than that, let's move on to the Adam and Bangle, which allows you to break the HP cap. So there are two easy ways to get this early on. The first one is it's a reward for beating mission 924. Uh, sorry, not a reward. It is a treasure chest in mission 924. That is where you can get the uh, the first one. Or if you want one a little bit later, or maybe you want more of them, you can also steal it from the boss in mission 933. Now, stealing it is going to be difficult here. The enemies in this stage are quite difficult. But again, that is up to you. You can steal it from the Grand Panzer in this stage. Now... What else is there? Well, there's the Protect Ring, which is from Mission 932. This is a simple reward, and this gives you Auto Barrier. So it gives you Auto Barrier and Auto M Barrier. It's Auto Wall, I should say. Sorry, not Auto Barrier. Highly, highly recommended for some of these later stages. Being able to cut your damage received in half is extraordinarily helpful. An amazing, amazing piece of equipment. Um, next up, we have the Jeweled Ring. And the reason we want the Jeweled Ring, okay? The Jeweled Ring is actually far better than you might imagine. So the Jeweled Ring basically doubles items dropped by an enemy. And this makes some of the best farming methods in the game even better. There are two ways that you can get this, okay? The first way is you can buy it from a store. Now, this is the store right here, the online shop shade. You can buy it right there for 10,000 gil. This will probably be the first way you have of getting this. Other than that, if you want more or you don't have the shop for some reason, you can also get it from a mission, which is mission 954. So 954, it is just a, uh, a normal treasure chest reward in this mission. Now, last but not least, in order to show this one off, I am going to need to load a different save because obviously I do not have it currently on this one. I did leave this one myself until a little bit later, but it is possible to get as well. So let me just skip ahead a little bit to here, my chapter four save. So this is just where I'm just sitting in the, uh, in the market in chapter four. And there it is, the Genji Shield. So what the Genji Shield is, is it keeps Barrier and M Barrier active. You absorb all elements and you nullify all status ailments. So this is basically a super ribbon, a wizard bracelet and a protect ring all in one. Unfortunately, it can be a bit of a pain to actually unlock. You see, in order to unlock the Genji shield, we need to fight a magic pot, and it's a very specific one as well. So you need to go to mission 766, the Determined Recruiter. In this mission, you want to keep running around, just fighting random battles, until you come up across the magic pot. Magic pot will ask you to use Costly Punch, Gil Toss, You'll need to deal 99,999 damage in a single hit, and you'll also need to use Octo Slash. So yeah, as I as I was saying, you need to use Costly Punch, Gil Toss, deal max damage, and use an Octo Slash in that order. The first three are pretty easy. The problem one becomes Octo Slash. However, as long as you do this sort of early on before you start unlocking, you know, all of your DMW images. It's not actually that difficult to get. In fact, I got it without using Octo Slash materia because I don't have it yet. I managed to get Octo Slash on my third magic pot. So it's not it's not that bad to get. It does seem like they've improved the chances of getting Octo Slash for the remaster as opposed to the original PSP version where, you know, you could spend hours trying to get this and it was just next to impossible. But once you get the Genji shield, you are probably going to have that equipped pretty much all of the time. And there we go, guys. That is that is literally how you get some amazing, amazing equipment and materia early on. Now, I know you might be curious how to get max stats like that. 
uh, this early as well. However, I do have guides coming for how to completely stat max all of these materia. You're getting 100 vert, 999 plus HP, 100 magic, 100 attack, 100 spirit. I'll show you how to get 100 luck, uh, max AP, max MP, and so on and so forth. I will show you how to get all of that in other guides. If you want to see these stat maxing guides, look down below in the description. There is a link to the playlist for Crisis Core Reunion. Click on that and the videos will all be in there. But though, that is going to be it for this video, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope it has helped, especially on the Materia Fusion side of things. If it has, then please be sure to smash that like button and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this video. Are these tips helpful, or are they not? Let me know. And of course, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more guides. As always, everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.